insert intro music namaskar people namaskar is namaste in assamese welcome to my show i'm samram your host for today i mean not only for today but for the rest of this podcast series as long as i don't fire myself i coined this series as questioning the unquestioned and imagining the unimagined because i wanted to question what is considered status quo in design in india and imagine what has not yet been imagined and go bananas so students the topic we will be discussing in today's class is minimalism it's actually a tongue twister you know say it fast and with me minimalism minimalism min- min- uh, never mind let's jump right into our topic also grab a bottle of gin or vodka every time i say minimalism take a shot minimalism has been here almost for a century now of course it's been there for centuries if you are talking about religions like buddhism but it started to appear in this material world with its foray into architecture back in 1920s in us 1950s and 60s saw minimalism in music art and design and especially this happened in europe and japan also saw minimalism in poems as well now in our times it is being used as a mindset and most importantly as a lifestyle by not being a consumerist and throwing away all the unnecessary stuff that are lying at various corners of our house According to Buckminster Fuller, an architect, an inventor, an author, minimalism is doing more with less or less is more. In design, it can be related to stripping away the unnecessary and keeping only the required in its features, functions and so on. To be honest, I'm I'm a staunch supporter of minimalism. I would prefer to have as less things as possible. I feel that the more I have, the more choices I need to make in life. I'm actually a sloth. I cannot get any lazier. And it it also kind of exists in our culture. There is a saying in Kannada language, "Hasige dashtu kalu chacho." In English it actually translates to stretch your legs only as long as the bed is this means do not stretch your legs beyond the bed why i have no idea i mean maybe it was my mom's way of saying there are monsters under your bed and not to expose my beautiful legs i'll leave the rest to your imagination coming back to the topic of minimalism in design a question for you guys Is it a coincidence that you don't see minimalism being used in the social sector and more specifically if you are designing for the marginalized or the poor I mean there might be projects as such but I'm clearly not aware of them I'm not talking of using less resource or less features to address the problems of the marginalized There is a subtle difference between minimalism and using less resource or less features for designing you might say it is tomato tomato in my opinion is probably not if you see the minimalism movement is born from the fact that you have a choice you can be minimalist but you don't have to be meaning to say you can choose to have a lifestyle that is less materialistic and less in everything but it is not forced on you the presence of a choice is very important however if you look at the marginalized they can never have a minimalistic attitude because they don't have a choice you might say their lifestyle is minimalistic meaning less things around them but it's not these scarce resources are forced upon them scarcity is forced upon them if you start designing with a minimalistic mindset for a social sector you are you are most likely discriminating against them minimalism is a privilege it's a privilege for the rich 
be it in the West, in India or Nigeria or Argentina, wherever. You might think that I'm painting a bad picture of minimalism. I'm not. It is as perfect as it can get. I love its philosophy, I love the designs that manifest from these principles. But you as a designer would understand that what works in one context is not necessary that it should in other contexts as well. Minimalism works in the West because they are wealthy nations. Most of the population, if not all, have the privilege to make that choice. If you bring that movement to India, a country with 40 million people in poverty, there is a major discrimination towards them. You might say, oh, I'm designing for the rich, so I'm going to use minimalism. That attitude, my friend, is already the basis for discrimination. Actually, I don't see the point of design becoming a discriminatory service. Design should not be discriminatory. Design should be democratic, available to all. Well, that was intense. It will get even more so. Just grab your popcorn. Let's travel to Japan now. Japan has had that minimalistic movement since God knows when. I'm not just talking about industrial design or architecture. It has been in their culture for centuries. Shintoism and Buddhism have laid that foundation. It is so ingrained and intertwined with spirituality that their culture speaks of minimalism. And it is probably not even called as a movement as far as I know. They use words like Ma, not the Indian word Ma, for some reason. Ma reminds me of my mother, actually. Yes, I've always been a mamoy's boy. There, I said it. Now don't ask me again. Ma in Japanese refers to celebration, a celebration of spaces, spaces between things, be it in architecture, graphic design or interior design. I mean, that is so beautiful. It truly reflects what they preach. Minimalism is implanted in, in the culture of Japan. Now, coming to the context of India, tell me, where will you find minimalism in the culture of India? If you are thinking of Buddhism, I'll come to that. Tell me in which part or demographic of India minimalism is celebrated. If you're thinking of Buddhism, I'll come to that. Now tell me which part of ancient history of India minimalism was mainstream. If you're thinking of Buddhism, I'll come to that. Apart from Buddhism, nowhere, nowhere in Indian history or culture, minimalism existed. On the contrary, India has a lot of chaos. A lot. I'm not talking about violence. Look at the sheer number of people on the streets. Look at their skin color. Look at their religions, caste, creed. I have no idea what creed means, actually. Incomes, genders. Look at India's transportation, its colors, its food, clothing, jewelry. Minimalism, yeah, right. Why would you want to use minimalism in India? Not only is it discriminatory, it does not exist anywhere. I hope you guys are taking a tequila shot every time I say minimalism, yeah? Now to the topic of Buddhistic minimalism. I'm going to keep this a little short here. Minimalism in Buddhism is not the goal of Buddhistic philosophy. It is not an end result that they, meaning Buddhists, want to achieve. It is actually a lot more complicated. But in simple terms, their main philosophy is you need to become peaceful within yourself and with your surroundings. So minimalism ends up becoming a byproduct of this philosophy, not the end goal. Meaning to say, once you have peace with your surroundings, you would lose interest in whatever unnecessary things you have. I'm using the word minimalism here because it is based on its culture. You see, because of peace, you have minimalism in Buddhism. Now, why does the word peace sound familiar? Yes, that's right. That is what India stands for. That is what India has stood for and will stand for. 
that is peace in its languages, in its cultures, in its food, well, maybe not for the foreigners, there is peace in its music, architecture, there is peace in its chaos. I will restate that. India has found peace in its chaos. It celebrates chaos. How beautiful is that? Do you see the pattern here? Peace is our ultimate goal and not minimalism. Buddhistic minimalism, as I mentioned earlier, is a byproduct of peace and not an end goal in itself. And so should our designs. Designing for peace and designing with peace is what we have to strive for. If we are to concentrate on peace, minimalism might become one of the ways how peace gets manifested in designs. One of the ways, not the only way. So, is peace discriminatory? No. Is peace in our culture? Hell yes. So why not use peace instead of minimalism? There are several questions that are probably going on inside your head. How should peace look like in Indian design? How should we assess peace in designs? What are the qualities or experiences that define peace? I unfortunately do not have an answer for that. Not yet, at least. I, for some reason, have a feeling that there are probably going to be other designers out there in India who have had this similar thought and probably would have already employed peace in their designs. And I think it's, it's my duty to uh, get them on, on this platform and speak to them. And hopefully I can find them. So, I'll wrap this episode up. Thank you for tuning in. If you have any opinion on this, feel free to let loose your emotions in the comment section. I'll see you in the next episode. Namaskar. Insert outro music.